We are Dad and Rock, and this is Peacemaker Rewind. Tonight we're talking about episode four of Peacemaker, The Chode, A Less Traveled. It's always fun to talk about a chode, isn't it? Yeah, this title I got. I got this title. <laughs> you picked up the... Okay, so you're yeah. one for four. We're, we're in good shape here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one wasn't oh. too difficult. Well, what'd you... Just right out the gate, what do you think of this one here? So we were talking about like some of them have been heavy character driven, some have been heavy, heavy action. This was a character driven episode. This was. This, we get a lot of backstory. We get a lot of backstory on Peacekeeper, Peacekeeper, uh, Peacemaker. You've done it again. That's the second have, time you've called a Peacekeeper. They're called the Peacekeeper or something. Or it was a title on anyway. It's a peacemaker. We get a lot of um, character growth on Chris. I see, I don't want to call him Chris either because you're Chris. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> John Cena. You know who I'm talking about. Um, but uh, overall, it, not only uh, Peacemaker's character, but uh, some of the other characters too. We get some more more character stuff. Uh, it's like, you know, it's kind of back and forth of waffles, like heavy action and then character development, heavy action. Uh, but I don't mind it. Sometimes that could be bad in a show when there's not like a healthy mix or they don't balance it right but so far so good well i think they've been able to balance this one with the comedy as well yeah so they've been able to filter in the comedy enough to go ahead and counter whenever it is heavy or you know action-packed or so they've done i mean he's done a fantastic job yeah at you know figuring out the the way to sculpt these episodes yeah and it's totally bingeable this show i mean it was um released i think it was released weekly yeah it, it was, was a weekly, weekly release yes um but i'm glad that you and i are able to rewind and watch this thing um back to back pretty much um because it, it's like one episode ends and then the next episode picks up right where the last episode left off like you yeah. don't miss too much there's really no time in between yeah because like we're like right now they're back in the van leaving that mansion um, just kind of like recuperating and, and yeah, because the van's breathing. all beaten up and they're just yeah. kind of limping back to HQ. Yeah, and um, you know, and peace, um, peacemakers like y- you know, Project Butterfly. Like, tell me, he's he's trying to get answers, um, and, and they ask him. Well, he finally knows that you know this is some sort of creature or alien. Uh, they ask him what he did with the the butterfly that came out of Goth's face, and he says that he killed it. Um, but it's curious as a viewer, as a watcher, as soon as he said that, I was like, I don't remember seeing him kill. Yeah. I I didn't remember seeing him shoot. I was expecting him to pull out the gun and just boom, blow the pieces. And he never did that in the prior episode. That kind of makes you think like, what, what's going on here? Yeah. We find out what really happened uh, later this episode, but, um, they get back to headquarters and, uh, Mern is, is mad because, you know, peace peacemaker is supposed to be on the team. It's supposed to be the psychopath, the guy who just yeah. kills indiscriminately. You got a killer that won't kill. Yeah, you're not supposed to question or hesitate. Mm-hmm. Like he, this guy's supposed to like love killing, and yet he had that. Uh, but he all. But to Mern's credit, when he brought him in the office, there was a conversation. Yeah. It wasn't like he tried yelling at him. He evenly just spoke to him. Are you in this? Is your head in this? Are you good with this? Yeah. And that's when Peacemaker said, I'm good. But it's just that he had that struggle with killing the kids, which that that shows me there is a moral compass within Peacemaker. And that's one of those things, like you were saying, I don't know if you were mentioning the last episode or not, but we know that he's not all bad. There's something, there's more to him. He's a layered character. And we're learning these layers among amongst all of it and we i think we a little bit later in this episode we we see why he struggled with shooting those kids and it's it's for you know kids reasons and for personal reasons yeah it's kind of one of those things where it's kind of hazy like would peacemaker kill a kid um if he thought that it was just you know if he was given a good reason would he still have the hesitation there yeah um because what he tells mern is that You know, his real problem was that he was supposed to kill these kids without knowing anything (laughs) because he's not being told anything about this whole butterfly project. Um, So that's that lack of trust, that doubt is what really kind of emphasized his already natural feelings about, you know, killing kid and what that would be. Yeah. Um, So I kind of take that at face value. But there's another part of me where I'm like, I'm like curious as to whether this peacemaker, this guy who, you know, kills in Suicide Squad. He definitely killed, 
yeah. but he was always shooting at like bad guys or soldiers. There were adults. adults. Every single one he was, it, they were all adults. There was no one under age that he had to run across and actually and kill. And so legitimately, cool. you could see how he could justify in his own head that killing that particular target would have been acceptable. Yeah. Um, but you know, when confronted with something like this, you know, you see the difficulty that he has. So, um, but Mern, you're right. To Mern's credit, he does. He basically cops to it. He's like, yeah, you know, I understand, you know, that you hesitated, and I, you know, and he says, you know, come back later on tonight, and I'll You'll tell clear you your about head. this whole thing. Yeah. So I mean, after he leaves, him and uh, him and Vigilante, who is now in complete just civvies, I mean, right. he's completely out of his gear. He was and now part of the team. Yeah, and, and we also find that he also finds out that the team went ahead and framed his dad. Yeah. So he's pissed off that they framed his dad for what took place at that apartment complex. Yeah. Well, that happens a little bit later. Yeah. Once Abadeo. Oh, and, never mind. Yeah. Cause at this Parker. point here, I'm sorry. They were going to his dad's house to right. go ahead and get another helmet. Yeah. Because, and, and during that drive vigilante is like thanking him for letting him be tortured, uh, which is like this really backwards thing, but like, he didn't mean he was being he was being like sarcastic in a way. And um, yeah, there's some there's some uh, that rough dynamic there because like, well, you're angry, not- aren't you? I'm not angry. You're angry about it. I, I can hear the anger underneath you. Yeah. And the tone you're I'm not angry. See, I'm telling you, I told you you were angry. <laughs> yeah. Well, he didn't give a crap about him getting tortured. <laughs> no, not one, not one bit. It was great. Um, the peacemaker finally arrives to his dad's house. And um, his dad's no longer there. I mean, his dad was arrested and taken away a couple episodes ago. Yeah. Um, so he's walking through the living room. You know, the TV's on. He, you know, clearly his dad's not there. I did want to mention something that they were very specific about showing a news report on the TV. A gorilla being kidnapped from the local zoo. And they called it Harambe. Did you catch that? Oh, no. Did they really? They called it Harambe. That's the gorilla that wound up getting shot in Cincinnati. Yeah. Because it attacked that. a child. Yeah, that fell into the yeah the actual habitat. I caught that. I was like, "Whoa, that's that's that's, that's a little uh little current." And who's right there? I feel it was very like specific to be mentioning that. So I don't know if we'll eventually see a gorilla later in the show or what. But um, I thought just thought it was a weird drop because um, they focused <laughs> so much on it. Um, but uh, Peacemaker he goes through the house. He goes into the his dad's secret lair. You know, White Dragon secret lair. Yeah, and he's gonna take one helmet, and then he's like. I mean, screw that. <laughs> he just starts taking them all. Oh, but I mean, he's there doing everything. And eventually Vigilante walks and just kind of just strolls in, looks hey, around. Yeah. Like, Check right out in. this. Yeah. But we see the white dragons like super villain costume. Uh, yeah. And it looks badass. It does. And there, there's going to be a reckoning. Yeah. There is going to be something that's going to happen with Matt. And I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know if he is a butterfly. I don't know. I don't know what the deal that that just popped in the head. I never even thought of him being a butterfly. But that that's would be interesting. But uh, I, th- yeah, you can't drop that armor, that vision of that armor, and not see that in action. I think his dad is eventually is going to be back inside that armor. Oh, absolutely. Maybe, maybe fighting Peacemaker in the team. I don't know. We'll see. But um, yeah, so uh, Peacemaker he he leaves with Vigilante in tow. The next door neighbor, the old guy, stops him. That freaking old man. That old guy oh, claims he's just making conversation, but he's just digging at Peacemaker the whole time. Oh, and Peacemaker ripped right into him. It's just tore him. You he know, did. it was great. And he's like, whoa, whoa, just trying to make conversation. Right. Yeah, right. You were being a jerk. <laughs> yeah. You were just, just doing that to try to, you know, get under his skin. You got there, but yeah. you didn't like what you found. <laughs> and in doing so, he was like, you know, you're going to go to jail just like your old man. And at, it's at this point that Peacemaker learns that his dad's currently in jail. Um, and I guess he, he puts two and two together because he immediately calls back to HQ. Uh, you know, he's like, why is he in there? Yeah. And I was like, and th- then he finds out, you know, that they actually framed him for what happened at the actual apartment yeah. complex. And then he's pissed. Oh, sure. He's really pissed. And then Mern's pissed at Economist for being a dumbass. Yeah. That's pretty much what it really came down to. And now yeah. he's like, he, he's going to see him. He's like, he, he told Vigilante, take me to see him. We're, we're yeah, going he's on, he's on route. And Mern has to do something quick because it's like things start to unravel with this team constantly. And Mern's constantly trying to, like, keep things from un- unraveling, basically. Um, he's trying to contain it. So he sends Abadeo out to intercept him, essentially. 
Um, he's like, you know, Waller put you on this team for a reason. Go, you know, prove yourself, basically. Yeah. Uh, he tells Abadeo to, to do that. And uh, she does. She actually does meet them great... before they're able to get to the jail and she gets to the parking lot or whatever and kind of. And stops. almost got to him. I mean, she was yeah. getting in his head. Yeah. And eventually, I mean, Peacemaker's like, screw it. I'm going to see him anyway. Yeah, she tells it like it is. She's like, this dude, you know, this guy is like just not a good guy. And he's not worth the amount of effort that you put into him. And he says, all I don't want to think our parents are bad, but he is bad. (laughs) Yeah. With Vigilante watching on and Vigilante is just kind of an agreement. It was funny. I I saw in the scene, I saw Peacemaker and two people that actually may be legitimately his friends and people that legitimately care about him. Um, which Peacemaker doesn't have a ton of people that care about him in his yeah, life. Yeah, I don't think he really has any. I think it's always been just Vigilante, and he didn't know who Vigilante was. Right. And now that he knows who he is, I, I think there's, like I said, there's a, there's a relationship there that's going to be growing. There's going to be a, a trust factor that's going to be growing between those two. And there's absolutely going to be something with Ab- Abadejo. I There's no yeah. doubt in my mind. Yeah, and out of the team, Abadejo is the one that Chris trusts the most. Mern even calls calls it out. That's why he sends Abadejo. Um, so yeah, it, it almost gets to him though, but he's resolute. Like he wants to go inside and, and talk to his dad, um, which he does. And once again, his dad's just a piece of crap. <laughs> well, it's not just that we find out that she sits down with, um, vigilante and talks him into going ahead and, you know, going in there to try to kill his dad, make him, make him go away. She plants the seed of an idea. Yeah, she's very stealthy about it. I mean, she's very manipulative, where she's just like, oh, you know, Chris, I I just think that if his dad was out of the picture, he would just move on and have a much happier life. And, you know, she's just thinking out loud, right? And, of course, the whole time, Vigilante's just like, yeah. (laughs) He's buying the whole thing. And, dude, I mean, it was fantastically stupid. He goes into the back where all these sheriffs are just having lunch. Yeah. And he, he very he difficultly moves the trash can. The way he drags it over to almost, almost like he did it on purpose to make a show right. of him moving it. Because yeah. the way he picked it up and just chucked it into the window. <laughs> it was then he funny. just lays down. <laughs> I know I like Vigilante as a character. Like it's just uh he's got kind of like Deadpool vibes or something. Yes, um, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, and it's just really, really funny, but yeah, he's like, Hey, watch my baby toe. (laughs) (laughs) But dude, I loved it when he was walking through the jail, like they were all making like, like sometimes like, Oh, like new fish. Yeah. They were like, yeah. And he was just walking through the smug look, like pretty much bring it. And he he didn't didn't care. Yeah. He's, he's a tough dude. He knows how to handle himself. That's for sure. And he's a psychopath. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I mean, there's that too. If you're, if you're a psychopath, you're not scared of anything. Yeah. Yeah, well, we go back to headquarters, and uh, uh, Judo Master is waking up. <laughs> He's been unconscious this whole time, and he, like, does some kind of weird thing, like, shakes himself out of his restraints, and um, um, he is not, well, he's basically hiding. Uh, we think that Economist has been, like, watching over him this whole time in that room at headquarters, and he comes back to the room, and, and, and Judo Master's gone. Uh, he thinks maybe he's left entirely, but no, he was no, just he was in the closet. He, he gave him a judo kick to the face. Oh, yeah. Shot him across the freaking uh, room there, and he's all bloodied up. Yeah. And, and this uh, moment we see uh, Peacemaker come back, and he's like, he's, he's gone. So he starts chasing after him. Now we, we get round two. We do, yeah. With uh, with Peacemaker and Judo Master. And uh, this was a good one. because they're, they're beating the crap out of Jay. This was it's a good a, choreographed fight, dude. Yeah, they're both taking each other out. And and it's always but, interesting seeing like uh, two different body types because John Cena, of course, is a mountain of a man, right? Yeah. And then this guy who is legit, he probably is like I don't know if he's as short in real life as he's portrayed on the show, but he's a small guy, small frame guy, but he's incredibly acrobatic. And John Cena is too. I mean, pro wrestlers have to. Be well, I think that's what they play. they're playing off of Cena's strengths. Yeah, his strength is that type of ring performance thing. So he's yeah he's performed with like. Uh, you know, luchadors, for instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly so, what I was thinking of with uh, Judo Master. I was thinking Rey Mysterio Jr. Yes, yeah, that was the name that I was trying to come up with. The luchador yeah. came out. So, I mean, right. this with the same, you know, idea. So, when he's doing all that, he's already has the training of being with guys like that in the ring. So, yeah. it almost, it's another one of those things that he brings that physicality again. Yeah. And the realism 
to a fight like that. Yeah, that's why I love these. So far, so good with all these fight scenes. When he was fighting that that metahuman in like the second episode, and um, yeah, just all kinds. Of, it, the fight scenes have been really cool. This yeah, they've been fantastic. No Except it was it was ruined. It was cut short right in the middle. Well, yeah, they're getting ready, and this time Abu Dhabi, she she didn't hesitate. She got up and just boom, shot him right in the chest. And that was yeah. right before. I was right after. I mean, right after he went ahead and said butterflies aren't what you think and boom right. it's almost like she shut him up she heard it coming she heard what he said yeah and she wasn't gonna let him say it make you know another comment yeah because the minute she he said something she knew chris was gonna think about it and then he was gonna overthink it yeah then it would have been in his head completely is it's playing over and over and over again on repeat and i think he said enough to plant that seed of doubt in his head already we haven't seen him well he's a, he's questioned it once and then he hasn't said anything since about it yeah but i don't think he's the type of person or character that would just forget no i don't think so either no I, I in fact i think he's a bit shook between the conversation that he had with his father in prison earlier in the episode where his father was bringing up his lost long lost brother mm-hmm. we only get the first mention of his brother at this point and we, you know, it's it, you could tell it plants a seed of an idea in his head that he kind of is dreaming about later or flashing to later. Um, so Abadeo's shook too. She goes back to, you know, she's an HQ, she's just killed a person. Well, even though Judo Master is not dead, but he's dying or whatever. <laughs> yeah, they said he's pretty much, he's pretty much done. Yeah, but, uh, so he, she's having a tough time. Uh, Peacemaker goes back to his house. He gets stoned, he gets high, he starts dancing to records. We find out that he actually has the butterfly yes oh and i thought episode. the thing was gonna get loose because while he's getting stoned he's blowing the smoke <laughs> into the container so that thing's stoned and then eagerly knocks it out of his hand i'm like oh no yeah i thought you all was gonna get out and they're just rolling around they're just kind of there and we see a flashback of him when he was a kid yeah when he was first by probably i'm guessing that's his first murder where his dad pressured him into killing this guy yeah, and then we see his brother is just laying. It looks like it's a fight, like a punch got him, and he's laying on the ground, just foaming, like I'm having a seizure. Yeah, and I mean, we can connect the dots, saying he probably died from that. Right. So we see yeah, those very two. traumatic stuff. We we actually skipped. I forgot about the scene where later, um, Peacemaker finds Harcourt at the bar and asks about his file. Yeah, because apparently they all know about his file, and he's the only one that doesn't. And she tells him that you know, according to to his file, is that. His dad trained him to be a killer from a very young age, and his brother died. His older brother died at some point, and that he had something to do with that. Um, I think we're meant to think that maybe he killed his own brother, but it's it's still kind of fuzzy yeah, whether yeah. or not that's the case. But yeah, yeah he's I don't messed think, up. Yeah, no, he, yeah, he's he's been messed up from the very beginning, and it's all his dad's fault. Oh, yeah. I mean, we go back to this scene when he was in uh, prison visiting his dad. He starts comparing himself to, to the title of the show to a show and said, like, oh, you're, you're comparing yourself to it so but but a good show dad <laughs> yeah um yeah the layers of humor throughout this dramatic stuff is really funny oh um, man yeah so i mean after all that we got vigilante now in the, in the jail with him right. and he walks right up he sits down at the table with all these white supremacists yeah, and he wants to talk about what black culture has brought great to this country. Let's start he, with rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, because he uh, knew that would dig right at him. And he's going and he's going, and finally one of them like says something, steps in, leans in too close to him, and oh, was over. He took out three of those goons, one right after the other. Um, but they were attacking him. Like the camera saw that he wasn't attacking. He was on the defense. Yeah. Um, and, just and White Dragon doesn't take him. the bait. White Dragon doesn't go for it. And they both get taken away. Well, he knew what was going on. He was smart to the to the situation. Yeah. And then he realizes someone he thinks his son sent someone in there to kill him. Well, vigilante says he mentions he says, I think he says the word dad, like something about you being a bad dad or whatnot. And as soon as he says it, vigilante hangs his head low because he's like, Oh, he messed up. He shouldn't have said that. Cause now it's like, yeah, the white dragon thinks that this is, you know, basically a messenger from from peacemaker um, yeah so, so it's, and that's Harcourt picks him up from jail he gets released they're able to uh economist is able to work some wizardry by the hacking and he's able to get out of there Harcourt picks him up and he's 
he's down and depressed because he tells Harcourt, he's like, I think I made things worse. I just, yeah, I just made things worse. And then you know, back in HQ, yeah, Mer- Mern pissed off everybody because now he's pissed off at, you know, Adam- Abadeo because yeah. she talked him into going in there and trying to kill his dad. Well, first of all, they framed him. Now they're trying to kill him. <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, how many more ways can they screw this up? Yeah. Um, so I think, I don't know. We, we, we were kind of scattered a little bit with this episode. A lot happened. They were going back and forth between locations. Yeah. Um, but like, there was a lot that happened this episode as far as internally with the like character wise, but there was a big, big reveal at the end. Yeah. I mean, Abadeo is going through some things. She thinks she made a connection between some. I, I'm not quite sure. I don't understand the connection. Did I meant to the... pause and look at the business card she was looking at and see what it said, but it was I couldn't really see what was going on there. Yeah, I've watched it a couple of times. I just really, I, I didn't make it. If you guys made the connection, drop it in the uh, the comments there to let us know yeah. what you thought about it. But uh, she calls Mern, and then Mern responds, and then we see this take place. And it's like, oh, my God. Leora. I think I found something. Great. I'll be right over. Can you believe it? Mern was watching I- Lethal Weapon 4. That was fantastic, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he's a butterfly too, apparently. Dude, did you see, did you see that coming? N- no. As soon as that scene started up, and you saw the blank look, like I was like, "Is he a butterfly?" I thought they were gonna like leave it kind of nebulous, leave it vague to the next episode. But no, it was a weekly just, release, yeah, right, yeah. But no, they just went for it right there. Okay, so hear me out on this because we talked about this a little bit before we went uh, for the show here. Yeah. Uh, Janessa, my wife, went ahead and has a theory about this. Okay. She thinks he was clean all the way up to the last episode. They took out the family. So you had the kids, two kids, and then the wife, who in theory would have had these things fly out of their faces as well, just like oh, it's true, the yeah. husband did it in the basement. And there was nowhere that, no one to capture him. Well, Mern got the crap blown out of him because his little device didn't go off until he was standing in front of him and it went all Acme style oh, on him. Oh, yeah. So he's laying there. We got the thumbs up saying he was okay, but he was like almost like nearly unconscious. True. Her theory, and I kind of like her theory, is that one of those three that were in one of the other members, family members, actually implanted themselves in him at that point. Oh, wow. That is, that would be an opportune time. See, I haven't even thought of this. Hasn't even come up because Mern's this entire show. Mern's been kind of a weirdo, yeah. right? He kind of seems a little off. He doesn't like um, sharing his feelings. No, yeah, and his weirdness didn't seem like extra weird this episode. Um, so my assumption was that like he's just been this way the whole time. But that is would be a very opportune moment. And, he, and if you think about it, even thinking further. Uh, you know, in that dining room of that mansion, there would have been three butterflies, the wife and the two kids. Um, And we have three people that are laid out from that explosion. We've got Harcourt. Oh, I didn't think the other two. Yeah. Harcourt, Abadeo and Mern were all laid out from that explosion. For Uh, The other two weren't very much. I mean, they were, they were knocked back, but they weren't like, you can see in the next scene, they were like, kind of like getting up and, you know, taking stock of each other. So, Oh uh, man! I don't know. What if all three of them? I don't think it's going that way, but you know, potentially, if you're thinking down that road, <laughs> potentially. Yeah, that. I mean, once she said it, and I thought about it for a minute, and I'm like, I don't think he's been one from the get go. But if if it was gonna take place, that would have been the opportune time for it to actually happen. Yeah, and I, I'm almost buying it. I, I would not be shocked if now we see like a a a clip showing it taking place and when it happened but how does that now affect the the actual mission going forward well we don't even know the intention of these butterflies from the get-go i mean yeah it's like you know we're meant to think this is sort of like an invasion alien invasion of the body snatchers kind of thing but what if it's not (laughs) what what, what was judo master going to say right yeah these butterflies are not what you think right 
So, so I don't know. <laughs> we know as much as Peacemaker does. Yeah, how much and how much does Waller know? Right. You know what 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 does she know what it's actually going on? Dude. And the fact that Peacemaker kept that butterfly and told the team that, that he, he killed that butterfly. Yeah. Shows that he's not trusting these guys all the way. Well, at the very beginning, he yeah. says, "I oh, he told Abadeo, I don't trust M- Mern. He's done mm-hmm. things too. I don't trust him as far as I can throw him. Right. And I'm pretty sure he can throw him a ways. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he knows, and and there's vigilante knows. Vigilante knows he didn't kill him. Yeah, he, he must right because he was in the room. They were together. Yeah. So those two know, and I wonder if I don't know, man. I think I think there's going to be a trust thing built between Abadeo. I'm saying her name wrong. Abadeo, Vigilante, no, right. and and Peacemaker. And yeah. I would not be shocked if Hardcore comes into it. And if, and and the, the one that does not come into it may wind up being Economist. He kind of keeps right. his distance. Yeah. Do you see some type of like budding relationship? Uh, just friendly, like playful, like tension kind of between Hardcore and and Peacemaker. Yeah, um, but I'm still. I mean, we're halfway through this series so far. Uh, I think there's a total of eight episodes, right? Yeah, um, eight so episodes we got through episode four. Um, we'll be back next time to talk about episode five. But yeah, so far so good, man. I mean, I love the mystery. I love the character yeah. growth. I love the action scenes. I love the comedy. And something before I haven't mentioned is just like I love the mystery of this. Like the mystery is unfolding episode to episode. We're learning a little bit more. And it's, uh, you know, kind of co- plays some things close to the chest. And I like that. Yeah. And not to mention the music. The oh, music man. is phenomenal on this show. It's so good. Um, but I, I guess till next week, uh, next episode comes out. Yeah. Share your feelings with somebody. <laughs> we'll see you.